Hey everyone, welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name is Irit and on my channel I share my crochet adventures. I'm a relatively new crocheter. I started crocheting about a year and a half, a little bit less than that ago. Totally obsessed, love everything about it. And I am in Austria, in Europe. The very messy Europe at the moment but we're here for some yarn talk, some escapism from current events and that's why I'm here and I hope you will enjoy this video. So today I'll show you some updates. I have to say I've been kind of busy with other things in my life with kind of my day job and I haven't had as much time to crochet in the recent weeks probably as I kind of had before that which I also find it's not necessarily bad because sometimes I do a lot of like stress crocheting and yeah uh, on the topic of stress COVID finally caught up with us after two years so we have our first case in the house my daughter uh, got it my eldest she's fine and yeah, it's just, you know, we've been like so afraid of this thing for two years and yeah, but it, it was very, very clear. Her school uh, class, like the entire class, so four classes, 120 kids, went on a week of ski. She's vaccinated, they all tested, now half the class is sick. It's not surprising, it's the wonders of Omicron. I think uh, none of the kids are like seriously ill. For my daughter it was just like a cold, I wouldn't even say like a severe cold. Um, she's fine, but she has to kind of, if we don't do anything, and of course she's uh, asymptomatic, um, I think she can get out of quarantine on Monday, which is like three days from now. But uh, she can come out of quarantine earlier if she does a test, but there are no tests to be found. And I have to say till now, at least the impression that I got in Austria, things were very organized and, you know, you could get tested like for free for a long time. I think now they stopped with the free testing, but uh, it was really no problem. There were like no crazy lines or nothing like that, at least where I am. But yeah, now it's like impossible to get a test because I think there are like tens of thousands of sick uh, or like new cases like every day. It's just crazy. So yeah, what are we talking about? <laughs> Escaping reality? Let's talk about yarn. So I'll start with the f almost finished object, which I am kind of excited about, but it does need a couple more things. So most of the um, loose ends are sewn in, so that's already like a win, but there are still a couple more. And I feel that always gives it a, a more, you know, handmade, unfinished, frumpy look. Uh, so I really need to do that. But I also feel like it needs some serious uh, steaming or blocking, uh, even though I don't really know how it will respond to that because this is the yarns that I used are cotton blends and they're only like 50% cotton and the rest is synthetic. So we'll see how it behaves. But this is my cardigan. This is based on the half and half construction. And a few things, I'll start with the good stuff. So the good stuff is I love the yarn, I love the fit. Um, and it's just like I like the I'm super excited that I managed to successfully I feel successfully combine two types of yarn uh, for this project and I I just really liked how it all went together I had my doubts <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it all worked out the issues that I have uh, are a couple so first of all I need buttons because uh, I decided that I want to add buttons. Even if I don't go with it completely closed, I feel like it needs them. And I have to go to a shop. I have some buttons at home, but they're really like, you know, very colorful kind of plastic buttons. And I think maybe something, maybe like a pearl button would work really nicely with the sweater, kind of give it a little bit of a elegant touch. 
So I think I, I need to go to the shop and hunt for some buttons. Um, also, one thing that... I mean, I'm not going to do anything about it, but maybe next time I should give it a bit thought. It's a little bit too high here. Um, so something I need to consider, like next time I do this, probably I could have... Yeah, I didn't do that. That's the problem that I didn't do any decreases for the neckline and I really should have done like a couple of decreases so that it just, you know, looks more natural and just doesn't go like this. Um, I think it's fine. It still fits nicely. I really, really like the look of it. It has kind of that almost like a touch of that bomber jacket kind of look to it. I think because of also these panels from, you know, the thicker yarn. So all in all, what I want to do, I mean, I did call it a finished object. It's not completely finished, but I want to put the buttons on and then I want to show you how it looks on me. And ideally, I want to make a tank top. I have some yarn from this and the same kind of yarn in other colors. So I think I just want to use them up together and do a tank top. It feels... Uh, it's a cotton blend that feels incredible. It has it has that like chain spun uh, construction, and I really love it. And I think it would be a really beautiful kind of twin set for spring. You could pair it with a nice flowy skirt or just like a pair of jeans. Uh, so I would like to do that. I still didn't think about what kind of tank top I would like to make. Uh, probably sleeveless, but. Yeah, I'm not still not sure exactly what style. It'll be very, very simple though. This uh, I know for sure. And yeah, but this is done. And I ordered a bunch of the Katya Pluma concept. The Katya concept is the kind of brand and Pluma is the name of the yarn and you can see it's like this fuzzy yarn that really feels incredible. This is mostly cotton. I've shown it several times. It's 85% cotton and 15% polyamide and you get uh, 50 grams give you 150 meters and I've shown the weird the weird sweater that I made uh, using several colors that I had so I, I was wearing it in a different video and I actually it was uh, kind of a failed attempt even though I have to tell you I really like wearing this but what I did like was the look of it and the drape um, even though it's like a fluffy fluffy yarn it still has some weight to it and I used a pretty large hook I used a 12 millimeter hook for this and so I really feel like it's it's a perfect kind of spring or even, you know, summer evening uh, garment. And what I want to do is just, I just want to do like a V, like a slightly oversized, more a relaxed fit V-neck sweater using this color. And I have a natural color uh, from this which I think I'll use maybe for like the sleeves and then the bottom of the sweater like I used here, uh, the dark blue. So I have I have this color, so I think uh, this will be a nice combo. Yeah, I really like how they look together. Uh, so I'm just going to use this one for the edge and then uh, like a bottom um, hem probably. So I started doing that and I also wanted to show you if uh, you might want to try this technique, especially if you like these kind of more open stitches. I'm usually not a fan, but in this particular case, with this stitch and this yarn, I do like the look of it. Um, it's not lacy or anything. Uh, so here's my sleeve, <laughs> the beginning of my sleeve. And again, I'm using the half and half construction. So I'm going to start from the sleeve up and then connect it where the V um, ends or the middle of the V and this time I'm not going to do like full length sleeves I want them to start a bit higher so probably here that's what I'm thinking and the way the technique that I used for this which I really like 
uh, I really like the look of it is basically you see it looks like I I did increases but I didn't I start with you know a chain and just a, a single crochet round round with an eight millimeter hook and then I continue in pattern which is the single crochet double crochet working in a spiral and every row I increased the hook size so my first row with, was with an eight millimeter then a nine then a ten and now after you know a few rows I am uh, at my desired hook size for the entire sweater which is the 12 and so you get this look of increase and the fabric just gets a little bit more open gradually and I personally really like that effect and yeah I think it's like a really nice way to get that um, increase in your sleeve without actually doing increases not that it's a problem to do increases but I just like this technique and yeah so that's what I'm doing I'm hoping this will be a weekend project because because of the large hook this comes together very very fast I made this really fast um, for like an entire sweater uh, even if it was a fail so <laughs> but that's my plan and hopefully I think I have enough of the yarn that I ordered so that is um, one of my current works in progress. The second one is actually found this really cute video. I don't know, YouTube suggested it and it got it right. Um, it was a really fun video on how to kind of use your stash with like lots of pattern ideas. And one of the things she suggest suggested, and I love this idea because I do like the look of you know weaving or like weaved pieces but and I have like a loom I have actually a really large loom that I bought um, I'm not I prefer the process of crocheting and so this is thanks to that video I found this pattern of a wall hanging hopefully you can see so this is called the daybreak crochet tapestry and it is by Two of Wands. That's the website. And yeah, so it's just like this wall hanging. It looks like a weaved piece, but it's all done in crochet. And she used, or they, I don't know, used the Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick uh, to do this. And which, which hook size? A 10 millimeter hook size I don't have like this like a ton of uh, bulky yarn but I do have a lot of uh, like four weight worsted weight iron weight and so I just used the double of the colors that I had and I'll show you where I am so far it's really really fun it's great to use up leftovers and I really feel it's like one of these patterns you can kind of change it as you go um, if you don't want to follow exactly the instructions you could totally do that uh, you know add colors change it a bit so I'll show you it's kind of big but this is where I'm at isn't this fun this is super fun and there are like different textures you can see there's like a loop stitch and the uh, um, these like popcorn stitches or bubbles or whatever you want to call them and it's just like really really fun so my colors as you can see around me and I really need I think I have in my stash a little bit of this color I should I don't know if there's another if I already used all the colors that I'm supposed to use but if not I definitely want to bring in this color I love it so you could probably do like if you had a ton of like DK weight yarn you wanted to use you could probably do like a triple DK weight use that uh, but this is a really great idea to use up leftovers and yeah I just find the process of crocheting this much more enjoyable than weaving and I'm really happy that you know I could have probably come up with this idea myself but I didn't <laughs> so I give full credit to um, yeah just like doing wall hanging hangings with crochet and this is also such a great way you know to use up stamps to play with stitches because you don't have to think about gauge you don't have to think about wearables you don't have to think about all these things that uh, 
I think about when I'm making uh, garments and yeah and I just really love this idea and I love how it's looking and I'm just excited to continue working with it so it's a little bit it's kind of like I have to set myself up on the floor and kind of keep all the um, uh, yarns somewhat arranged but it's a lot of fun and it's quite a big project but I can't wait to have that thing on my wall it makes me super happy and I, I think I have actually now I'm not sure I have a space for it because I finally put up some <laughs> nails in my walls and hung up a couple of the canvases that were here before so they are hanging now where I thought I would put this wall hanging because it's like my colors I don't know if it will fit anywhere else in the house but I'll make it work. I'll find a place. <laughs> we'll see. I'm working on my kind of studio space or my craft room or whatever you want to call it. And yeah, it's just like I before. So I don't know. It's just there's a lot. Like I have accumulated a lot of stuff. I mean, crochet is just the most recent obsession. But I started my current journey back into that creative place uh, with scrapbooking and that's a hobby that you know especially if you scrapbook a lot and my choice of format was uh, 12 inch you know 12 by 12 inch pages it takes a lot of space I have just like you know f where was I I don't remember I was distracted by a very important question for my 12 year old which was if I had to pick one song that I could listen to, or I had to listen to just one song, would it be Somebody to Love from Queen or Bohemian Rhapsody from Queen? And that's a pretty impossible question. But yeah, so we discussed that. So this is what I ordered from, from the yarn shop. I ordered five, I think, of these. Oh, I actually... It's good that I make these videos because I was I didn't remember that I ordered a couple of yarns that are new to me So I ordered hopefully enough to make a sweater from this and then they had these on sale These are I love this yarn. It's Phil Gourmand. I want to say from Phil Dar. It's a French brand um, I really really love these because they are super super soft and you can make the lightest fluffiest sweaters from these and I have made um, I think one till now and I really want to make another one and uh, they have beautiful beautiful colors what I don't like about this is that it's completely synthetic so I'm trying to find alternatives but the colors that they have I mean these are just like my colors and so they were on sale they were like really really inexpensive like three and a half euros or something and you get a lot I know that like one skein um, gets you a lot this is made in Italy yeah as I said completely synthetic 65% polyamide 35% acrylic uh, 50 grams give you something 125 meters but you can use large needles like large hooks or large needles with this and I don't know I kind of feel like playing around with colors maybe try and do something a bit more exciting than just stripes but I really would like to make like a spring garment with these even though the content is not uh, ideal uh, but I did get two yarns that I'm not familiar with and I wanted to try so this one <laughs> always <laughs> some of them look like so tiny when you get them and you're like really so this one is Phil Natour from Phil Dal. that's how it looks and this is more of like a summer yarn I actually think it's not crazy soft uh, when I'm touching it so this is made in Italy like I think most of their yarns this is this has a really really nice summery plant-based natural composition so this is 48% cotton 28% viscose and 24% linen can kind of feel that roughness of linen but I do think it's supposed to kind of soften you know as you work it as you uh, and wash it uh, 50 grams 
give you 165 meters or 180 yards and yeah so this means that you know at least like one skein gives you like a lot and I do like this like color you know the fact that the colors are it's not completely flat I like that effect I think it adds some depth to a garment um, yeah so I need to like make a sample but I it looks like it could be it feels nice it's not like crazy soft but I definitely wouldn't mind wearing it against my skin and I have to see how it works up uh, because I do like the composition and just the idea of it. it's probably for like tank tops or uh, like a short sleeved shirt for for spring or even summer I think it would be a great choice and then this one I mentioned it in the past this is from DMC and this is their <laughs> this is their uh, Natura Just Cotton so this I heard was like super super soft I have to work with it um, maybe it's just packed tightly it's not super super soft at least not you know the kind that you touch and like oh that's so nice and soft no um, it's a hundred percent cotton and it's kind of more of a traditional cotton yarn so this is how it looks I do love the color the color is beautiful and it's just kind of like a traditional cotton thread uh, 50 meters give you 155 50 grams give you, sorry, 155 meters or 170 uh, yards. They recommend two and a half to three and a half millimeter knitting needles and three millimeter hook. Color is light blue and it's gorgeous. To me, it's like beautiful spring color. So I do like that. Uh, these together are not, <laughs> not my cup of tea. Um, this, this is what I'm really interested in. I'm really interested in combining fibers. It's something that really speaks to me. And that texture. And this is more of an exciting color combo. So we'll see. Maybe if I have some leftovers from the sweater, um, I can add... Or maybe I can add this to the sweater. As I was planning on doing the like border with this one but maybe I should consider doing it with like a cotton thread like this something to think about yeah so those are all my updates I'm sorry I've been a little bit missing in action haven't been able to crochet as much as I would like and oh I have another th something fun to show you so I have talked about in previous uh, podcasts about uh, knitting and I am like I definitely want to knit more and one of the things, I love color work and I've just been watching all kinds of like super interesting courses on Craftsy. Ow! <laughs> Owie. Okay, this is sharp. And one of the things that really intrigued me was uh, Portuguese knitting. And so I got this pin that lets you, that helps you with Portuguese knitting. So. This is the shop that I ordered it. It's really hard to find this and I had to pay a lot of shipping. Like shipping was I think like three times as much as these little pins and the uh, owner of the shop, I don't know if it's actually owned by the same woman that teaches uh, this on Craftsy. I mean it's her shop. I don't know if she's actually the one handling the orders but uh, I ordered a pair of these and she wrote me thank you for the order and she's sorry I had to pay so much shipping so she sent me three pins uh, which I thought was really really nice I mean you know shipping costs are not anyone's fault it's just the way that it is but yeah I couldn't find anything in Europe which was very surprising because you know if this is Portuguese knitting you'd think I could find something from Portugal but uh, no I did find like really really beautiful versions of these let me, like, I don't know if you can see, but these are like Portuguese knitting pins. And the way that it works is you put it on your shirt and then it's like a pulley system with the yarn. Um, it's a really, really clever way, I feel, of like controlling the tension in your knitting. 
the purling with this I think also the knitting is easy but the purling is like really really easy when you use this and um, yeah I don't know if this is like interesting to you then you know you can look on YouTube there's not a lot about uh, Portuguese knitting and yeah what I find especially interesting with this is that you know you can put two pins here and then when you're working with two colors it's kind of really easy to work with two colors and I am interested in color work so yeah uh, I showed so I want to try also knitting in the Portuguese knitting way uh, I haven't made any progress on my little knitting sample here I think uh, with this book that I'm working with I I don't think they have other color work techniques that I'm currently really interested in trying I think what I'm going to do is do their sample of the intarsia knitting because that one interests me and then I'll just bind it off and you know steam block it or something so that it's not this sad looking tube but that it wears flat or that it lies flat um, but yeah this was a lot of fun and kind of gave me a bit of confidence that you know I could tackle uh, color work and I think it's hard to argue with the fact that this is beautiful to it's just like beautiful it's beautiful to see and it's beautiful to I don't know it's like exciting to think that you know you made something so I feel like intricate and lovely um so yeah that's all my updates thank you for watching i really hope to do like a you know start to finish video with the sweater and show you how you can use the half and half construction for a v neck sweater which is super super simple um if you follow the pattern um in the cal which we finished yay uh, I do like just a scooped neck, but it's super easy to just do a v-neck and That's what I'm going to do. So hopefully I can share all that with you It's just taking me some time and Yeah, that's all I have to say for now. Sorry. This was a little bit all over the place. I'm just kind of all over the place at the moment, so <laughs> I'll see you soon in another video. Hopefully take care. Bye. Bye